Hello everybody, this is Manu S and welcome to another MTG Arena Top Decks series here on my channel. Been a bit since the last deck tech, but uh, today I want to talk to you about um, yeah, Mono Red Aggro or as I would call this version Gruel Deck Wins. It is very close to the list that Alex Mashelton ran to a uh, top 8 finish at the Music Championship in Cleveland recently. So yeah, I figured I'll talk you through the deck, give you an idea how um, how the deck is supposed to be uh, played, especially what the sideboard cards are for, and show it in action a bit, because I think the list is uh, very close to optimal for this approach to mono red. There are like kind of two approaches. There's this like more creature heavy, uh, frenzy red deck wins type approach, and then there is a more um, yeah modern style burn approach that is heavy and burn spells with skewer the critics and uh, stuff like that, and usually no splash. So yeah, today we're going to talk about the Cruel Decks, Cruel Deck wins uh, approach of the archetype. So let's take a look. All right, sorry, there we go. So this is the deck list. The only change in the main deck that I made basically is I cut the 21st land, a mountain, and added the first chain whirler. I never quite felt that you need the 21st land, a uh, 21st land, um, even though you have for Frenzy, but the deck has four light up the stage, which helps a lot with finding uh, that force land. And also, uh, by the time you want to play Frenzy, since it's often not a turn four play, um, you usually have the force land, and the deck does really not uh, like flooding as much, unless you can stick a Frenzy, which you uh, can't always do. So I feel like the 20 lands um, is a good number, especially if you don't have additional four or five drops in the sideboard that this list doesn't have, so um, or Bane Fires. So I feel like the I'd rather have the Force Chain Whirler in the main than the 21st land. Um, but uh, that might just be a matter of preference. Also on Ladder, um, there's uh, still a fair share of White Weenie and Mirrors and stuff, and also Mono Blue, where Chain Whirler is just great, and it's not really bad against anything. Uh, and 3 just seemed kind of like an odd number to me. So yeah, the deck is super straightforward. We have 20 creatures, 4 Firebrand, 4 Lava Runner, 4 Steamkin, 4 Pyromancer, 4 Chain Whirler, which basically makes this deck more of a red deck win style. Red deck, like I said, um, usually burn decks only have like 12 to 16 creatures. In standard currently it's usually 16 just because Chain Whirler is so good. Otherwise it would probably only be like 12, like in modern, um, and the rest all burn spells. But yeah, um, basically Firebrand, um, not that great, like it's not that much of a threat, but it still um, gives you something to do on one, has the utility of still being kind of a burn spell or removal against small creatures, which is useful. All in all, it's more of a necessary evil than a great card, because you want at least your 8-1 drops to um, yeah be proactive on turn 1 and get damage in while you kill opposing creatures against, against other creature decks with your burn spells. Uh, Lava Runner is like the premium one drop basically the deck has a lot of cheap spells so you often can even attack for two by turn two or just like play some play a two drop on turn two and then on turn three play two spells and a lava runner for example or play a spell on turn one a two drop and then a spell on turn two and a lava runner with haste so they are basically better goblin guides if you draw them later but um still pretty good early on uh, even though they might sometimes only attack for one uh, the first one or two attacks. And the fact that they have um, two toughness also means that they don't die to Chain Whirler in the mirror, for example, and um, yeah, attack uh, well into some smaller creatures sometimes, where a one toughness creature like Pyromancer would just trade down. Then we have for Steamkin. Steamkin is um, either amazing or not that great depending on the matchup, but in the matchups that it's good, it's really really good. Like against mono blue, against mono white, uh, those type of matchups where um, you can just play it on turn two. They have very few ways of effectively dealing with it, and then you basically get like a two mana four four that also lets you um, get an unfair mana advantage and explode onto the board. And also happens to synergize really really well with frenzy. That's another thing. Like sometimes you don't even need like four lands for frenzy. You just have a steamkin, and steamkin lets you drop the frenzy and also feed the frenzy with mana, uh, which is amazing. So I think if you're playing frenzy in your deck, you 
basically should be playing uh, four Steamkins alongside your four Frenzy. Playing one but not the other seems wrong to me, especially if it's Frenzy without Steamkin. Steamkin without Frenzy uh, is still fine though, depending on uh, what uh, approach you have basically. And yeah, again, and even against like other decks, it's still a creature they cannot ignore and they have to deal with. It's just not that great in the sense that it's uh, fragile early on. So against like other red decks, they can just kill it with anything. And um, against decks with removal, they will just usually point a removal at it right away, which is not bad. It's just trading one for one in cards and often in one for one in mana or maybe one up in mana. So it's still okay. But uh, it really shines in the matchups that I mentioned. And then we have Yoshino Pyromancer. That's basically the other four wizards because you kind of want at least your eight wizards for your wizards lightnings to not be too clunky because at three mana they are pretty bad and at one mana they are obviously amazing. We all know how good lightning bolt is. And yeah, this is basically effectively a bit better than a two mana two one haste would be um, since you get to deal the two damage guaranteed, even if they have blockers, while a haster couldn't do that. But it clearly isn't that great, since a two mana two one haster would be pretty bad. And this is not much better, but it's a bit better. It's a wizard for lightning, and it's sort of a bad burn spell uh, when you draw it later, and so on. It's just kind of more of a necessary card, really, than a great card. It's a bit underpowered, but um, yeah, you need to do stuff early on and have a couple of permanent damage sources in matchups where you just want to clear the way for attackers. And then we have big bad Goblin Chain Whirler. Not much explanation needed here. There's still a fair share of one toughness creatures in the format and Chain Whirler just clears them for free while being a pretty good attacker for 3 mana 3-3 three, three first strike. Also in a deck with a bunch of instant burn spells making it really hard for the opponent to block it even with bigger creatures because they uh, might end up trading their like big creature against a shock effectively and, and a combat step from a chain whirler. And then we have the premium spells for shock, for lightning strike, for wizard's lightning as the 12 burn spells um, that against creature decks mostly serve as removal but can also just obviously finish off the opponent once you got them low or um, you use them as burn spells right away if you're in frenzy mode and just kind of drawing them for free uh, and against like control or combo they mostly just serve the purpose of uh, cutting the game short by killing them faster. And then we have the card advantage engine for light up the stage and for frenzy. Light up the stage is amazing. Divination for one mana is great. Also a cheap spell for lava runner. Like sometimes you go turn one lava runner, turn two shock or light up the stage or wizard's lightning light up the stage, something like that, or even wizard's lightning shock, and then attack for two, which is great. It also helps you hit your land drops, um, makes one one landers more keepable. Like if you have a one drop and a light up the stage, especially on the play, um, these hands are quite keepable usually. And yeah, the card just added a, a lot of power to the archetype uh, with it with its release. And yeah, frenzy is still the powerhouse that it always was. A lot of decks that can't answer it basically cannot beat it. If they are behind on life total, they usually just die before they can kill you, uh, thanks to Frenzy uh, providing you with so much resource advantage. Um, it's uh, not quite as good necessarily as it used to be, uh, mainly because uh, of the release of Modify and Esper being the predominant control deck and control being one of the matchups where you would want a card like this. And now Esper has like three main deck answers or four main deck answers to this, uh, making Frenzy less reliable, but it's still really powerful and uh, you often can at least get one or two cards out of it before they um, modify it if you uh, time it well. Um, but that's why some people have moved away from Frenzy approaches. There's no uh, skewer the critics simply because there's no room. All the other cards um, are better, like the other burn spells are better and we want the creatures for the mentioned reasons. And yeah, we also need our card advantage engine. So this is just not really a version that can support skewer the critics. That's what I meant. Like there is a more burn oriented version that um, kind of plays um, risk factor and skewer over like frenzy and steamkin basically, and usually doesn't uh, splash green either. I might make a video about that version as well. Um, 
a mono red version with that approach actually finished top eight last month in the hands of an Italian player um, that I think finished six with a um, non frenzy, non splash red list that was very burn heavy um, to combat, um, for example, Asper having answers to frenzy and stuff like that, and a hostage taker's post board for treasure maps and so on. And yeah. Last, we got to talk about the sideboard. Sideboard is um, pretty interesting, and I think one of the bigger draws about this version, and I think what makes this uh, version particularly strong, and probably a big part of why um, Amage went, I think, seven and three and constructed with it, because it has a lot of transformational potential in a really cool way. So first off, we have um, the one Dire Fleet Daredevil that mostly comes in in a mirror but can come in uh, against some other um, archetypes. Basically look for cheap uh, spells. If they have a bunch of cheap spells that would be worthwhile getting with this and or the 2-1 first strike body being particularly good, then you can bring it in. Like against Wadwini, they don't have targets for it, but I think it might still be worthwhile bringing it in simply because a 2-1 first strike is really strong against most of their creatures. So I could see bringing it in there. And yeah, it's great in the mirror. It's um, it's potentially fine against um, say something like Izzet Drakes and stuff, or Gruel decks with a bunch of burn spells. Just uh, kind of uh, evaluate on a case by case basis. And we have for Lava Coil, they come in in a wide range of matchups. Be it Soul Tie, Why Do We Need Mono Blue, Drakes, um, the mirror. There's a lot of matchups where this comes in. Um, basically most creature matchups, especially creature matchups that have uh, bigger creatures and or something like Rekindling Phoenix, like Rule, for example. Um, just a very efficient removal spell and post board who are often going to transform into a bit more of a reactive controlling deck that kind of tries to kill everything the opponent does and then overwhelm them with uh, frenzies and treasure maps when they try to kind of up their amount of life gain and stuff. So you just want to go into grindy mode and then you need to deal with their threats a lot of the time. Then we have Cinder Vines. The obvious use for this card is Reclamation decks, but there is a whole lot more that this card does in this particular deck. It uh, doesn't and shouldn't do this in um, a fair share of matchup, uh, a fair share of decks. Like for example, I think in Gruul it's a bit different, but in this deck, the card also happens to be pretty great against what uh, our game plan looks like against, say, Esper Control but also in the mirror. Like in the mirror and against Esper, you basically just uh, transform your deck, take out the lowest impact cards. Like for example, in the mirror, you want to take out um, the firebrands and pyromancers that die to um, opposing chain whirlers and just kind of um, be all removal, burn spells, and like the few good creatures that have immediate impact like chain whirler or lava runner and just punish the opponent both for playing spells um, with Cinder Vines out and also doubling as an as a very efficient answer to the treasure maps and frenzies while we have our own treasure maps and frenzies and also dealing damage to them while destroying said cards. Um, yeah, and the card that also comes in uh, with Cinder Vines and sometimes even without Cinder Vines is treasure map. Uh, when you go into like grindy mode, like against Soul Tie, for example, you want treasure maps but you don't want Cinder Vines. Because you just go into like frenzy treasure map uh, removal mode, killing their critical creatures, especially wild cross walkers, and then just kind of trying to grind them out with your card advantage engines. Then we have Collision Colossus, which can also which comes in against Mono Blue and Drakes, for example, but it also comes in against Asper because it's never fully dead. You can use it on a creature to deal damage. Uh, just have to be careful with removal, but it's a semi-free answer to sideboard cards like Lyra, which um, otherwise um, could completely take over the game and win the game for the opponent. So having a cheap um, kind of flexible card that you can bring in that can kill a Lyra because they usually only have one or two, but is not rotting in your hand doing nothing if they don't have it is pretty good. So that's kind of where uh, Collision Colossus comes in uh, handy. So yeah. That's the list, that's the sideboard. As usual, gonna hop into three matches in Mythic Ranked and show show how the deck plays out and how to sideboard it a bit. And yeah.
As usual, you can find an importable decklist down in the description, as well as a link to the playlist uh, for the whole series and so on. Um, yeah, before we uh, get started, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button down below, turn on notification icon to not miss out on future content, and please consider whitelisting YouTube on your ad block to help support the free content. And you can, of course, you can also find me live streaming MTG Arena and posting about it on social media and on my Twitch channel uh, up here, which you can also find as hyperlinks in the description down below. All right, uh, see you in a moment with match number one. Stay tuned.